This lecture has been prepared as an integral part of the project developing a higher education curriculum in SET teaching for the health protection and promotion of intellectually disabled individuals. Today I will talk about the prevention, control and measures for COVID-19. There has been a distinct and emerging situation in the COVID-19 pandemic with measures and strategies continuously adapted due to the changing epidemiological conditions locally updated guidance as well as scientifically validated information. A large amount of research and analysis has been conducted on the effectiveness of these measures to contain the spread of this disease and mitigate its impact. However, we must also be mindful to the, of the potential long-term consequences that the decisions made now may have on future generations and ensure that our actions do not come at the cost of their health and well-being. Learning outcomes are develop the ability to understand the unique challenges faced by children ID during the COVID-19 pandemic, learn how to protect themselves and others and thus preventing the spread of COVID-19, learn how to adopt behaviors that minimize the risk of transmission to themselves and to those around them, and for learning advantages of early intervention in controlling the spread of the virus and mitigating it, the impact of COVID-19 on individuals, communities, and healthcare systems. Let's begin by examining a video titled Coronavirus Disease, COVID-19. The video covers various aspects, including the origins of the disease, the methods of transmission, the symptoms associated with COVID-19, the groups of people who are at a high risk, how to recognize if someone is infected, effective measures to prevent transmission, and the appropriate actions to take when one falls ill. After watching this video, students will gain a comprehensive understanding of the concepts related to coronavirus disease. In December 2019, there was a cluster of pneumonia cases in the city of Wuhan in China. Some of the early cases had reported visiting or working in a seafood and live animal market in Wuhan. Investigations found that the disease was caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. The disease was subsequently named COVID-19. COVID-19 spread within China and to the rest of the world. On 30 January 2020, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. In this video, we'll take a quick look at what is currently known about COVID-19. Keep in mind that this is a new disease and what's known is rapidly evolving and might change in the future. So what is a coronavirus? Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses. They consist of a core of genetic material surrounded by a lipid envelope with protein spikes. This gives it the appearance of a crown. Crown in Latin is called corona, and that's how these viruses get their name. There are different types of coronaviruses that cause illness in animals and humans. In humans, coronaviruses can cause respiratory infections ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases. These include the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, first identified in China in 2003, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus that was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012, and SARS-CoV-2, the name of the virus that causes COVID-19 that was first reported in December 2019. So, where did this new virus come from? It's known that coronaviruses circulate in a range of animals. Sometimes these viruses can make the jump from animals to humans. This is called a spillover and could be due to a range of factors, such as mutations in the virus or increased contact between humans and animals. For example, MERS-CoV is known to be transmitted from camels and SARS-CoV from civet cats. The animal reservoir of the new coronavirus is not known yet. How does the disease spread? The disease can spread from person to person through droplets. When an infected person releases those droplets through coughing, talking, or sneezing, for example, when close to another person. It can also spread when infected droplets land on objects and when another person touches them and then touches their eyes, nose, or mouth. What are the symptoms? The incubation period, which is the time taken from exposure to the virus and development of symptoms, is on average five to six days, but can range from one to 14 days. There can be a range of symptoms, from very mild to severe. Some people may not develop symptoms. 
Common symptoms include fever, fatigue, and respiratory symptoms such as cough, sore throat, and shortness of breath. Some people reported loss of their sense of taste or smell, and some may develop a skin rash. In more severe cases, there could be pneumonia, organ failure, and sometimes death. About 80% of cases recover from the disease without needing special treatment. But there are some people who are at risk of serious illness. They include older people or people with underlying medical problems, such as chronic respiratory disease, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, or cancer. How can we tell whether someone is infected? The infection is commonly diagnosed by a test called reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, generally known as PCR. This test identifies the virus based on its genetic fingerprint. There is also a blood test that can check for antibodies against the virus, which may show that someone was infected in the past. How is it treated? The treatment for COVID-19 is mainly supportive care. Medicines against the virus are currently under investigation. How do we prevent transmission of the virus? There are a number of effective ways to prevent the spread of the disease. These include covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing with a flexed elbow or tissue, and throwing the tissue in a closed bin immediately after use. Wash hands regularly with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub, maintaining at least one meter distance from people. And the appropriate use of masks and personal protective equipment, especially in health settings. It's important to stay home if you're feeling unwell and to call a hotline or your medical professional. But if you have a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, seek medical care early and share your travel history or contact with someone unwell with your health care provider. In some areas, governments have implemented specific physical and social distancing measures to prevent the spread of the outbreak. It's important to follow their advice. Vaccines to prevent COVID-19 are currently under development and scientists around the world are working hard to make this happen. That's a quick look at this emerging infectious disease. We're still learning about this virus every day, and what's known may change. So please, check the website below for the most up-to-date information. General measures for COVID-19 was vaccination campaigns, which means administering COVID-19 vaccines to eligible populations to reduce the spread of the virus and protect individuals from severe illness or death. Masks, masks particularly when used consistently and correctly can help prevent the spread of respiratory droplets that may contain the virus. Masks should cover the nose and mouth, fit snugly against the sides of the, fa of the face without gaps and be worn in crowded public settings when around people who are not part of the same household and when it's difficult to maintain physical distance. Hand hygiene, uh, encouraging individuals to wash their hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or to use a hand sanitizer containing at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Social distancing, physical distancing involves keeping a distance of at least two meters from others who are not part of the same household testing and contact tracing, conducting COVID-19 testing to identify individuals who are infected with the virus, followed by contact tracing to identify individuals who have been in close contact with those who are infected. Quarantine and isolation, isolating individuals who have, been, who have tested for positive for COVID-19 and quarantining individuals who have been in close contact with someone who has tested positive for the virus to prevent further spread. Enhanced cleaning and disinfection, regular cleaning and disinfection of frequently touched surfaces such as doorknobs, light switches, and electronic devices. Using an EPA-approved disinfectant can help reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission. Follow World Health Organization guidelines. Guidelines from reputable health organizations such as the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention provide evidence-based recommendation on preventive measures, including hand hygiene, mask wearing, and physical distancing. Emergency preparedness and response plan. Developing plans for healthcare system search capacity, resource relocation, and coordination. And lastly, public health campaigns, raising awareness about COVID-19 and promoting preventive measures through public health campaigns and communication channels, 
such as social media, websites, and public service announcements. Next video teaches students simple steps to protect themselves, such as washing their hands frequently, avoiding touching their eyes, mouth, and nose, covering their co cough, cough with the bend of their elbow or a tissue, avoiding crowded, crowded places, staying at home if they feel unwell, seeking medical care early if they have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, and staying aware of the latest information from WHO. In this video, you will learn about the factors that increase your risk of, of contracting COVID-19 and what you can do to ensure your safety. The video emphasizes that your risk of COVID-19 is elevated when you are exposed to a larger number, number of people, particularly in indoor spaces with, with inadequate ventilation and when you spend an extended period of time in such places. However, you can mitigate your risk by following certain, certain preventive measures. Next video demonstrates that while no single measure can entirely eliminate the risk, significant improvements occur when these precautions are combined. Students will understand the importance of knowing the risk and actively taking steps to lower it. By implementing multiple preventive measures simultaneously, individuals can enhance their safety and reduce the likelihood of contracting COVID-19. After watching this video, students will be able to actively participate in a group discussion about combining different precautions to reduce the risk of transmission from COVID-19. No single measure completely eliminates your risk, but look what happens when they get added together. Know your risk, lower your risk. This video demonstrates important considerations for individuals to make safer choices in areas with widespread COVID-19 transmission. The animation emphasizes the significance of three factors, location, proximity to others, and the, and the duration of the activity. Through the video, students will learn that the location of an activity plays a crucial role in safety. Open air spaces are generally safer than enclosed spaces, particularly if the latter are small or lack proper ventilation. The proximity to other individuals is also highlighted, with the video emphasizing that it is the safest when there are fewer people, and people around and maintaining a distance more than one meter. Additionally, the duration of an activity is discussed, with the video suggesting that shorter durations are preferable to minimize risk. Three factors can help you make safe choices when you're in an area of widespread COVID-19 transmission. Consider the location, the proximity to others, and the amount of time you spend there. Where does your activity take place? Open air spaces are always safer than enclosed spaces, particularly if they're small or without fresh air. Proximity to other people is also important, it's safest when there are fewer people around and you can keep more than one meter apart. How long does your activity last? The shorter, the better. 
Think about each of these factors and avoid situations where the risk dial is high. Small or poorly ventilated places and crowds of people for long periods of time. Stay safe. Lower the risk to yourself and others. Challenges from, for preventing and managing COVID-19 in children with ID. Children with ID were particularly vulnerable, vulnerable during the pandemic because COVID-19 led to changes in daily routines. They, might, they may be at greater risk of contracting COVID-19 due to factors such as underlying conditions and difficulty adhering to safe, safety measures. For example, they are more likely to have comorbidities such as, as, such as respiratory or cardiovascular disease that could increase severity of contracting COVID-19. In addition, it was difficult for these children and their families to access healthcare during the pandemic, resulting in delayed diagnosis and treatment. Parents of children with ID in Pakistan were found to face several difficulties during lockdown, including access to healthcare, limited social support, and disruption of routines that provided structure and stability for, the, for their children. The transition to telehealth has been an alternative for many fam families, but has also brought challenges such as technology limitations, communication barriers, and difficulties with the practical aspects of providing care. This video provides valuable information on various actions individuals can take to effectively manage COVID-19 while stay staying at home. After watching the video, students will have a comprehensive understanding of the, of the essential steps to manage COVID-19 effectively while at home. By following these 10 rec recommendations, individuals can help prevent the spread of the virus, ensure their own well-being, and protect the health of those around them. Another study shows that remote learning has posed significant challenges for children with ID, as special education often requires physical responses and teacher inputs are, that are difficult to provide through online platforms. Furthermore, le remote learning can make it difficult for students to, to receive the same level of support they would in an in-person setting and can lead to increased feelings of isolation. Access to resources such as assistive technology and specialized instruction can also be limited when learning remotely. Due to disruptions in routines, social isolation, and limited access to support services, mental health issues have been worsened by the pandemic. Experiencing negative emotions, changes in moods, and changes in sleeping and eating patterns of children put them at greater risk of experiencing a relapse of mental illness as well as worsened existing existing mental health issues. Therefore, regular check-ins and access to mental health services are necessary to ensure they receive the support they need. This video aims to equip students with the knowledge and tools necessary to keep children navigate and cope with stress during these challenging times. In the video, it is highlighted that children may experience anxiety and stress during crisis situations, 
with response and swearing based on age. This can include clinginess, withdrawal, anxiety, anger, agitation, and bedwetting. bedwetting. The video offers five tips to manage children's stress in these circumstances. After the video, students will be able to answer the questions how, do, how to help children cope with stress during COVID-19 pandemic, and they will be ready to participate in activity and group discussion about providing support and guidance to children in managing stress and anxiety during challenging times. In crisis situations, children can perceive anxiety, which can cause them to feel stressed. Depending on their age, their response may vary. Some may become overly attached, while others may withdraw. Some may become anxious, angry, or agitated, and others may even start wetting the bed. Here are five tips to help manage stress in children. Play. Encourage children to play and suggest activities to help them relax. Bond. Try to keep children close to their parents, caregivers, or family members. If separation is necessary due to hospitalization, quarantine, or isolation, try to ensure regular contact via telephone or any other available means. Routine. Establish a daily routine or schedule and stick to it as much as possible, especially in the house. Create a routine in which they can participate in household activities, but also provide enough time to play and rest. Talk to them. Explain what's happening and provide clear information on how to reduce the risk of being infected by the disease. Be clear. Use words and phrases that are easily understood and age appropriate. Calmly explain what could happen if your child or a family member begins feeling unwell. Let them know they may require medical attention or even hospitalization to make sure they recover. Remember, listen to their concerns, show them your support, and be there to reassure them. Bear in mind, this is also a difficult time for them and that they'll need the extra love and attention. For more information, please visit the Pan American Health Organization's website, www.paho.org slash coronavirus. Children with ID require additional support in recognizing and communicating COVID-19 symptoms, as well as understanding the need for medical attention if they or a family member displays symptoms. One of the greatest responsibility of parents with young children is to explain the current situation, situation as transparently as possible, as effective communication about sensitive information has long-term effects on psychological well-being of a child. Given the unique needs of children with ID, their ability to adhere to preventive measures for COVID-19 requires additional support. In addition to, to the general preventive measures recommended for all children, such as hand washing, social distancing, and, and mask wearing, these children may have difficulty understanding and following instructions. Thus, parents and caregivers should provide clear and simple explanations of the importance of these measures. Some children may also require additional support for hand hygiene, such as reminders or supervision. To limit the spread of COVID-19, it, it is essential to increase awareness among parents and school-aged children about proper hand washing techniques, frequency and duration, as well as appropriate mask selection and usage and the proper disposal of use masks, especially in countries where face-to-face -face education continues. Providing customized and supportive information and resources, as well as addressing the unique challenges and needs with, of children with intellectual disabilities, should be an essential part of the COVID-19 response plans. Barriers created by protective measures. Children with disabilities and their families have been significantly affected by the non-pharmacological COVID-19 response, impacting their health, education, economy, and psychological well-being. Although some challenges are similar to those faced globally, these families specifically struggle with meeting basic needs, <clears throat> accessing healthcare for chronic conditions, and engaging in meaningful home education, home-based education learning. Protective measures to combat the pandemic made it difficult for children with disabilities to learn on an equal footing with their peers. For example, face, face masks create an additional barriers for deaf or hard of hearing children. Many rely on lip reading and facial expressions. 
Face coverings make it impossible to read lips, resulting in communication difficulties. For many children, wearing a mask is difficult. In particular, children with intellectual disabilities may not understand why they need to wear a mask, how to put it on and use it properly, in example, do not touch it, and how to dispose of used masks. Children with autism may have difficulty adjusting to the modified mask wearing routine, as well as any other post-pandemic changes. The stakeholder group of persons with disabilities earlier found that masks and hand sanitizers promoted as preventative methods against COVID-19 were often not widely available and unaffordable. The new routine of frequent hand washing poses problems for children with intellectual disabilities, many of whom have learned that hand washing is associated with mealtime. Information about how to wash hands or hand washing facilities may not be accessible. Physical distance creates challenges for children who rely on personal assistance and support in daily lives. For example, children with physical disabilities and children with visual impairments may require personal assistance to accomplish practical tasks such as entering and exiting school or using the restroom facilities, especially if the school grounds are not accessible. Blind and deafblind people, children and children with visual impairment may need tactile learning support through touch to learn on an equal footing with their peers. Individuals with autism may experience high level, higher levels of stress due, due to changes in their habits resulting from self-isolation and physical distance measures. They may find it difficult to cope with the lack of social interaction and may need extra support to adjust to the new normal. Such behavior may further increase levels of anxiety and paranoid thoughts leading to difficulties in behavior management and a diminished ability to practice effective social distance. Thank you for your attention.